So we've seen how to visualize correlation, but uh, we've also seen that you, you've got a lot, you've got to look at a lot of scatter plots sometimes. And uh, just finding correlations by looking at scatter plots is a bit tedious and can be error prone. So if we had all 25 products in our, um, in our subplot code, we'd need to look at 300 subplots. Uh, that's just too many. Um, and they would be tiny if we tried to fit them all into one figure. If you've got 250 products, then you start to get to ridiculous levels, uh, you know, 31,000. So that isn't going to work. Uh, and the other way of, of trying to assess correlation is to, to look at it numerically. You might guess that you can actually measure it numerically. And in fact, there's, there's not just one way of measuring correlation numerically. There's, there's several. And Pandas has at least three different versions of which will, it will use to calculate correlation uh, with this .core function. The default version in pandas is the Pearson co uh, correlation coefficient, and that's what we're going to use. Okay, and Pearson co uh, correlation coefficient is expressed as a number between minus one, which is perfect negative correlation, so the line going downwards from left to right, and plus one, which is perfect positive, so the line going upwards from uh, left to right. And so anything in between that, if it's close to one or minus one, then that's correlated. If it's close to zero, it's not correlated. Okay, and, and pan, uh, pandas will measure that for you. So once we measure that, how do we visualize it? And the, the standard technique for that is called as a, is the idea of heat maps. So um, again, if you've got you know these twenty five products that we're going to deal with, pandas is going to calculate twenty five uh, by twenty four correlation coefficients. Now, uh, which is six hundred. I said we we need actually three hundred plots to visualize those. 300 scatter plots and the reason for the difference is that um, there's, there's a kind of symmetric if you get the correlation coefficient for a versus f it's the same as the cor correlation coefficient for f versus a okay so there's a there's a, a redundancy in that calculation that we can uh, we'll see actually in the picture uh, and the standard way once we've calculated these things is to use a, a what's called a heat map and the heat map is simply just refers to a color chart where typically blue represents cold and red represents hot, you know, as we're familiar with. But it, you don't have to use those colors. And I think the standard color map in, um, uh, in uh, Seaborn is not blue and red. Actually, I had, to put, I had to put a blue and red one in. You can do this in Matplotlib, uh, but it's much easier using Seaborn. Uh, which is, a, as I said at uh, the beginning of the lecture, it's a high-level visualization library. It's built on top of pandas and matplotlib, so it, it can call bits of, can use bits of pandas and matplotlib to do its uh, high-level visualizations. Okay, um, so let's do a heat map then using Seaborn, and you'll you'll see because it's high level actually, there's very little code to use. So, what do we need to do? We need to import Seaborn. It's always I don't know why, but it's always imported as SNS. I think that relates to the original name or some, some sort of statistics, um, uh, something, uh, and now it's called Seaborn. Okay, so it's almost always, whenever I've seen it, it's imported as SNS. And then the code that creates this heat map is here. So this, um, as you'll see, we've got the, the, the two familiar bits, uh, the plot.figure at the top and the plot.show at the bottom. Uh, the thing that we're going to visualize is is created as core, okay, which is it. So core is equal to data.core. It's just that's just a essentially it's a matrix. If you if you know what a matrix is, it's a, a square of numbers. And then we visualize that. Um, and what you can see there is that I, I've used SNS.heatmap and I've there's various um, there's various parameters here setting to make uh, make it look right. Um, Okay, so just before we look in that, at that in detail, the, the, you might notice right down the middle of the chart, all the diagonal squares are red. And what does that mean? It means that um, product A is perfectly correlated with product A. So actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run this one. I'm not usually running these things, but let's just do, let's run this one. So there's the, there's the code. Uh, you might notice I put a 
um, a comment at the top there uh, that well, there was some problem with Matplotlib 3.1. I think that's that's now not a problem anymore, but you can, I had to, when I first started doing this, I had to go back to Matplotlib 3.1.0. So if you get um, an error where the, the edges of the squares disappear, uh, you need to go back and un, uh, install an older version of Matplotlib. But I think probably by now that problem has been fixed and so it uh, should be all right. Uh, we'll just wait for that. It's taking ages to do its thing. Uh, in the meantime, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, so there you can see the figure. I'll maximize it. No, I won't because uh, I'll then have my face over some of it. Okay, so you can see that A and A are perfectly correlated. So they've got a, so red is kind of ready brown, isn't it? Uh, ready brown square, which means they're perfectly correlated. But we can easily see some of the, the stronger correlations where we see stronger red colors. Okay, so once we've done that picture, we can, we're can we looking for strong red color, colors, which are the positive correlations or strong blue. Um, I think everything else in that, although I've, you know, we've used this code and I've got a variety of parameters, you don't really need to change any of them. That's that's all uh, done. You could change the color map. This is, this, this is the thing that's giving this kind of red, blue color map, but everything else. Oh yes, and I rotated the tick marks on the bottom. So if you look at these, these are rotated by 45 degrees. Everything else, uh, you could just use that as standard. You, you know, once you've got a, a data set, you can do the correlation and uh, of all the columns in that data set and it'll draw up, you can, this code will draw the correlation for that. So um, there's still rather a lot of information in that chart. Okay, and the company might not be, let's say the company isn't very interested in the low volume product. So what we can do then is, um, is to reduce the amount of information that we visualize. So this next version, uh, all, the, all the correlation code, all the, sorry, all the heat map code is pretty much the same. But what I'm doing is selecting all the, all the columns where there's anything over 10,000 sales a year. So, so excluding all the very low volume just by doing this selected is data columns where the data sum is over 10,000. That's a standard technique we've seen in, I think we saw in the first lecture. And then I, the correlation, the core, uh, I do, I calculate the correlation of those selected values. And the only other thing I've done here is uh, this um, annotation equals true, annotation equal, annotation KWS uh, size is eight. Okay. That, what does that do? It means it, it puts some numbers on the chart as well as as the uh, the colors. So colors make it easier to find um, strong correlations, weak correlations, uh, strong negative correlations, and then the, the numbers we can actually read off the chart. I'm going to run that one actually so that we can actually see it. And, uh, as you notice, it takes a long time to run. Um, and you can see the strong positive correlation. You can't quite see it on this chart because it's too tiny, but when it when it comes up, you'll see the strong positive correlations there we are. are between H. So that if we look, maybe if we look at this column, sorry, this row, H row there has strong positive correlations of 0 0.9, 0 0.9 with M and O. Okay, and there's also a strong one with M and O themselves there, 0.83. So H, M and O all have strongest red correlations. Strongest negative ones are J and S. Um, so if we look at J and S, J, there's a minus 0 0.87. Okay, uh, J with S is minus 0 0.87. So you're looking, uh, depending on what data you're looking at, you're looking for things that, you know, that are high, uh, large numbers close to one, or close to minus one. So in this case, anything over um, anything over 0.8, okay, or under minus 0.8. But if you may not have very strong correlation, so then you then you're looking for maybe 0.7s. Depends. You're really looking for the strongest correlation. Okay, uh, I'm going to finish that video here, and then we'll we'll look at actually what do we do next once we found these correlations.